I on now? I think I am. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Hagee. I draw charts and graphs at a blog called Index, and I have a new book out called How to Be Fearless in Seven Simple Steps. It's the follow-up to my book, How to Be Interesting, which came out a long time ago. And this one, I think, really fits the times because gestures and everything. And hopefully it is a good little sort of pep talk in a pocket for everybody who's going through everything from puberty to COVID to all sorts of other weird, strange things that are hitting our world. Cool. Cool. So what's your advice, Jess? What's the best or worst advice you ever got? The worst advice I ever got. We talked about this a teeny tiny bit right before we popped on, but it was be more ladylike, like quiet, sit still, don't say anything. And that just was the worst. Like never did me any good at all. No, I don't think so. I don't think that works for anybody. Being more quiet, being more, although although I, I think it's good to listen, but yeah, being more quiet, I don't, I don't know. So who gave you that advice? Why did they Why did they give you that advice? I mean, were you a loud, obnoxious child or what's going on? Uh, I wasn't so obnoxious because I didn't say much, but my face did. So I could like give the bird with my face like pretty well. Like you'd just be sitting there and be like, no. And that was extremely obnoxious. I read somewhere on Twitter that it was like, oh, I didn't mean to make that face out loud. And so that was me as a kid. Oh, that's funny. That's really funny. Crazy. So, and did you grow up in Seattle or where are you from? Where did you get uh, I'm started from here? Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, which is outside of Akron, which is outside of Cleveland. Nice. Nice, Cuyahoga Falls, that's cool. So so you started your blog index, gosh, what, 13 years ago, 12 years ago, a long time ago, when I first got into your work. Six, yeah, cool. So you're like, like right after mine. fossil layers of the internet, yes. I know, I know, right? Yeah, if we peel the, if we peel the rings back on the, the blog tree, you're pretty deep. And yeah, I started mine in 05 and bumped into you then and was like, wow. She makes Venn diagrams that I actually get, like in other sketches too. But I mean, the Venn diagrams first, I was like, wow. So how did you like realize that kind of everything overlaps and is interconnected like that? Yeah, so I have always been very like readerly and I was working as a copywriter before I did all the blog stuff. So I've always had like a really grocky sense of grammar and the visuals I do are really just different kinds of sentence structures. So like if you ever had to diagram a sentence as a kid, you know, like this follows this and the verb leads to this and all of that stuff. So really Venn diagrams are just sort of conjunctive statements. <laughs> so I, I think index though is a much better title than conjunctive statements. Right? Because I'm not sure though. Like conjunctive and you always think of like eye infections and like blah. so yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of little like twists and tricks you can do with graphs, but really when people see how the sentence fix, fits together, they're like, Oh I'm like, Yeah, it's a trick. I go into the joke knowing how it pays off, and then I just draw it as a graph. Ooh, that's that's lovely. I get that. I wouldn't have never. I I would have never put that together. But now that I know, now I look differently at your cool stuff. Cause that I mean, cause I love it. Like it's so simple for me. I'm a simple guy, so I like simple diagrams. They just make sense, right? I don't have to think too much. Mm -hmm. But then when I do, I'm like, ooh. That's yeah, it's really, like you get really it, good. but you don't really have to do a lot of work to get it because it's in a format that everybody kind of grokes. Yeah, totally, totally. So, so with with that, let's let's talk about your book. Let's talk about how to be fearless. Now, um, full disclosure, just set this up yesterday. I sent her a link. Said, "Hey, you want to be on the show? Send me a link yesterday." But full disclosure, I read the book. Like I read it last night. I couldn't put it down. Um, like digitally, because you were sweet and sent me the PDF and I ordered a hard copy because I love hard copy. Like I this I knew that this was going to be a book I was going to write out and do stuff with. But I'll tell you, I love how you start when you say start with envy. What the heck does that mean, Jess? And how is that actually powerful in helping us do what we want to do? Well, half the time you're told like, oh, you're not supposed to want things and you're not supposed to like crave anything. And Honestly, if you don't, what are you doing? Like, do you have any aspirations? Do you have any preferences? Do you have an opinion on anything? And really, if you can find that thing that you like deeply, deeply want when you see it and you're like, I want that, that big thing. And there's nothing really more motivating than being like, I want that. I want that good, wonderfully juicy, delicious thing. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. So how does that help us with fear, though? How does that help us get through the fear? I mean, that's the book, right? How to be yeah. fearless. So how does envy and want and desire, how does that help us be more fearless? Because I think fear tells you all the bad things that could happen. And when you're in that sort of state of, oh, no, what do I do? Things are going bad. Oh, no, anxiety feeling. You're not thinking about the one thing that's like, I need that. And I'm going to get toward that one thing. And if you focus on that instead of all the worry stuff, the worry stuff just fades right back. Like it just zooms right out because you're doing something that is positive and helpful and like motivating and fear is like demotivating. Yeah. And it just, fear it totally away. is. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So I focus on what I want and sometimes I might get pelted with stuff, but I'm still focused on what yeah. I want and now I can, I got it now. So now I can, now I can be more fearless. So that, that totally makes sense. So you said you say early on hopes and fears are opposites and i love the graphic that you drew with that not not only is it the the pin in the in the balloon right but also the cuts you down builds you up thoughts all of that so so t just go a little deeper on on that because it's so interesting how that connected to me and i would have never considered that until i read the book thank you yeah the idea of I really want this to happen. I, I need to figure this out. Everything around me is saying no, 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 no. And all I want is the one yes thing. And if I can start like chipping away at that and kind of carving out what my activities are, they get me closer to that one thing, boom, all of a sudden my hope is this tangible accomplishment as opposed to just a frozen fear sensation where you're you're like locked up and you're like, how many more times can I watch the Tiger King until I figure out how to like do something? That's funny. That's so simple. That's so simple about being fearless. And yet, wow. Wow. And yet that's not what we're taught. We're taught that it's hard. And oh my gosh, to be fearless yeah. is something. Hmm. Taking taking all the notes on like what fear is and reading like weird philosophers and ancient poetry and weird things about it and really trying to break it down into like, no, these are the core little tenets of this big weird feeling and making the book as accessible as to like somebody in high school as to somebody who's like trying to get out of grad school at the same time. So taking a, a big idea and making it really fast was yeah. the main work that went into that book. Yeah, de definitely, definitely. I, I so see that, I so see that. And, and with that, you know, the power of focus is something I think that that like really runs through this whole book as you, yeah. you come up with your seven ideas, the power of focus. And you talk clearly about, you know, putting it to work, right? Putting our focus to work. So how do we do that when we've got so much other crap that we have to stress about every single day? Yeah, I, re I really think that, I mean, you can hack all of your, there's a, there, the seven deadly sins are all vices, right? But you have to sort of measure them. And so proper vice management is taking like, your greed and your laziness and like using what like everything you really really want and turning that to good stuff so you need something you're scared of something all the bad stuff use the natural human tendency to be greedy and want things and use it for your own good proper vice management wow that's that's so wow that's so different that's so counter to what we hear jess that's so interesting yeah. Well, and I mean, it, it makes sense. You're not supposed, you have to sleep exactly this much. You have to eat exactly this much. You have to want exactly this much. You have to look exactly this way. And none of that makes any sense because if you really just kind of indulge yourself in what your purpose is and what you care about and neat stuff, like go for it. Like indulge your vices toward a better goal and it'll actually work out. That's that's so interesting. That's and I'm thinking about that. I mean that that just makes that ju I mean that just makes too much sense. The way you know the way that you put it out there. Um, I yeah. Wow. That's that's all I'm gonna say um, about that because it it it's still just po smacking me in the face oh, with cool. that. Yeah. No, yeah, that uh, is cool. Another one of the things I like kind of noodling with are like the lists of cognitive biases. And how like your brain is twisted to work in like these counterintuitive ways. And if you really look at some of those like functions, 
you can hack those and say, okay, so the recency bias, I'll think about that all the time. Well, if I just remind myself of something there, I've hacked recency bias and now I've got something top of mind. Like none of them are all negative and they can all be kind of used for better purposes, I guess. Yeah. That yeah. might just well, be use which guy. No, I, I think you're right. I do think you're right. I mean, it, it makes... It, it absolutely makes sense once we understand them, right? Once we get that, and, and to your point, once we stop judging them as good or bad and decide instead how we use them. I mean, anything can be good or bad. I mean, a, an index card could be used to kill someone or it can be used to draw cool things, right? So I don't know. You probably have used them as a throwing star yet, Jess? I'm just curious. Um, I've definitely made paper airplanes and these things are sharp, so. Right? Yeah. I mean, you can weaponize anything. <laughs> Yeah, for good or for bad, right? Dude. Our cognitive biases, we can totally hack and weaponize for good. Yeah. So that's, yeah, cool, I cool. Like that... this, is the, this is how things work and people have stereotypes about this. Well, let's change the stereotype and then people will think a good thing about this. Hmm. Like, you can do that with all of them. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That's That's so empowering. That's so good. So, yeah, everybody, hmm. everybody can use their own, like, lazy human meat brain to do all sorts of neat stuff. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I love that. So one of the things you also talk about is about being active, right? You want to use the neat brain. Being active over passive to get unstuck. And yeah. that I, th I think that's got to help with, with being more fearless. So talk to me about that one, please. That is, I think there's this idea that things just happen to you and you just react to them as opposed to saying, no, I'm going to go get that or I'm going to go figure that out or I'm going to go noodle with this or I'm going to go talk to that person. And just having that sort of giving yourself the agency to take those little steps, all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I am not just a victim of the universe. I actually have some sort of control over my aspect ratio and like the arc of my entire biography yeah well and of course we do right yeah. of course we do and yet if we don't act we do feel powerless we do feel like mm -hmm. well i'm stuck yeah Here's and it's that it's that fake it till you make it type idea where what was it if people start smiling they feel like slightly weirdly better and then there was another follow-up to that and it was like they don't feel better they just feel like they're doing something else Whoa. Like you're pretending to smile, right? And you're like, I'm not really feeling better, but you're feeling kind of goofy and you're like, this is fake and this is weird. And all of a sudden you're not thinking about what was making you not smile in the first place. Oh. Like I thought that was hilarious. That is hilarious. And that's that's so deep though. To, to, to the goal is not to feel happier. The goal is to feel different. And that's a goal that we can get to. I think that's oh, totally. way more achievable, right? That different. I can I can feel different. Yeah. That's cool. I can do that. Right. Wow, cool, dig that. So so with that, right, so uh, we get stuck, we do this, and, and then uh, you said something in the book. You said, silence allows fear to fester. If you don't call for help, nobody will know you need it. And yet we're told, hey, be strong, do our own thing. I mean, is that is that like the crappiest advice ever? I mean, how, how, what, what, do you, what do we do here asking for help, right? How do we do that? Yeah, I don't even think... Um, like asking for help and you don't have to be like, I'm completely drowning and really worried and everything is going to shit like right now. Like you could just be like, hey, what are you doing? Have you seen this meme? What, what's going on? Just like reaching out to somebody and just making that like, I'm here motion. And I think that is enough of a contact to kind of get you out of that space where like, I'm super helpless as long as you're conversing with someone or talking to someone or reacting to them. And it's a whole different space. Like you said, it's not necessarily like, I'm now blissfully happy at all times because I talked to someone. It's I'm not feeling completely like under this like fog of ennui that's just getting me. Yeah, for sure. Well, and that's really the opposite of people who are stoking our fear, right? Those people, if they're they're they might be commiserating, but certainly they're not putting more coal on the fire of, oh yeah, be fearful. You suck. Here's what could happen, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think, too, that what we're really, really afraid of, like, half the time, like, if I just let my brain go, I go, like, worst-case scenario ideas, like, ooh, that would be a really good plot, but that's just a very terrible thing. And if you 
let that sort of roll around in your head. Like it's great for like fiction generation, but it's not good for like doing things with your life. So actually kind of stopping yourself and being like, okay, now I'm going to do something else. And that, that really helps me get my brain around like, all right, now we're going to go draw this, scan this, call these people, get my emails done. Yeah. So, so are you going to write a fiction book, Jess? Or is this always going to, you're always going to be nonfiction? Um, I did, I did write, uh, I wrote a book of Gothic horror a couple of years ago. Really? Yeah, it came out from a small press in Britain. It's about uh, the crumbling due to acid rain and coal mining that happens under Pittsburgh, and there's like weird paranormal things. Wow. Wow, with your own name, or was there a pen name? Can we find yeah, it? Yeah, I used my own name. I was just like, let's do it. And um, I have a podcast that I haven't picked up since COVID stopped, but I have to go back to it. And it's short stories of exactly 100 words. Which is like a really cool art form. It's like a, it's called a drabble. And so it's fun to co like combine little, see how tightly I can tell a story. Wow. That's an interesting constraint. Isn't it? Different that? than time, a hundred words. That's yeah. interesting. Can, can do you have, do you have one that you can share? I mean, uh, I'm not me... looking for you to create one like out of the air here. No, no, that I would be it. impossible. Me... But yeah, I'd love to hear one. Cause that's really absolutely. interesting. Yeah. And it's called a drabble. A drabble. Yeah, it was, uh, where's my file? Wow, a story of exactly 100 words is called a drabble. That's so interesting. That's so, in how did you even find this, Jess? Oh, I'm just weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're just weird. You're funny. Yeah. Like, I mean, no, but for real, like, did you see it on Twitter? Were you doing a research thing? I mean, what, I, what? Oh, How gosh. do you even come upon this? I, I found, so I was reading about like flash fiction and I was looking for like another like way to get my brain going and different writers have different habits that they do or like projects. And so one of them was like write a perfect sentence every morning. And I was like, that's neat. And then I found somehow through that was this is what a drabble is. And I've got like 400 of them. You, you've created 400 stories. Mm -hmm. Of exactly 100 words. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. And it the whole thing is if I just get back and like start recording them again, I can set them up for like a year and a half to go. But so far I've only got like 40 posted and now I have to do it. I have to get back to this. So you're motivating me to, to fire up that mic again. That's cool. That's you really want me cool. to read one for you? Yes, totally. So yeah. So hit me with the drabble. Okay. This one's called On the Grid, and you're allowed to use up to seven words in the title, which I think is kind of like a loophole, but I'll take it because that's what the internet told me. Okay, On the Grid. He lashed himself to the precious old growth tree in protest. For 12 days, he survived on bottled water and granola bars. Exploitive television producers traded him in exchange for footage. He spoke eloquently of conservation, suffering with wholesome pride. Loggers cut down everything around him, launching sawdust and pulp shrapnel into his beard and skin, ensuring his canonization by growing legions of fans. After the news vans rolled away, he climbed down in the darkness, exhausted. His cedar was executed promptly after. The book he wrote about his experience devoured 700 acres of pine with its first printing. Wow, that's really good. Thanks. There's a fun. Really like, good. It, you can get like background and storytelling with just like just the right like adjectives. Wow, that is quite no, a battle. No, it's really good. I dig it. So, 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 like, how, I mean, do you just keep editing? How do you, I mean? I, I know it's not about being fearless, but it kind of is, yeah. right? Putting out a hundred word stories. Oh yeah, is kind of bizarre in so many ways, right? Because most people are like, what? Like, I, yeah. I wouldn't have thought you could have much there. So yeah, and, what's that and as a podcast, yeah. it's like a minute and a half. So it's like the wrong time for a podcast, but why not? Like, if I start it, maybe other people will too, and it'll be a genre. I don't know. But yeah. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. So cool. Well, let's jump back into talking a little bit more about the book. I, I oh, love yeah. that Drabble, though. That's such a great format to think about, right? I, I would listen to that. So make yeah. sure you hit me with the with that when you pop I'll it back up. Back up. Yeah, for sure, for sure, on the grid, love it. So, so this is interesting, right? So, so, so at, at one of the 
ways to be fearless, right, is to share and, and to be open to that mm -hmm. and uh, ask for help and all of that. And then you talk about putting your connections to work, which is something that is near and dear to my heart. I mean, that is one of the things that I think we all need to maybe do a better job of. And I would also say we should all do a better job of being available for our yeah. friends or for our connections. So so talk to me, how, how has that helped your work? How has that, you know, how has that helped your life? And how has that helped you be more fearless? Gosh, like the internet, I like when I started, like back in early days of blogness, like you don't realize that everyone is on the other end of the screen, like everybody, like, People can be like trashy or horrible or really, really wonderful. And I'm still like to this day stunned at the percentage of wonderfulness to like super evil. And really like if people are afraid to put things out or share or be earnest with what they're creating or thinking about, like don't be because the internet is surprisingly wholesome. Like deep down, people are pretty good. I agree with that. I love the internet. It would, yeah. my life would not be the same were it not for my blog, for not for meeting awesome people like you that like, you know, we realized this is the first time we've talked, but we've kind of danced know. around each other for years, which is fun. Yeah. The, and the internet thing too is like the worst that can happen is like you shoot somebody an email and they're like, they don't open it or something. And half the time, like, I just like to send random notes, like, I really loved what you did. That was great. Or I thought this was fantastic. And thank you. And like, people need more of that in the world. Like, just send some like, magic email fairy dust every now and then. And like, you can shift somebody's whole day. It's not difficult. Totally. I totally agree. And that's a, that's a great way to be more fearless is to your point, the worst that happens. Yeah, is no, thank you, or ignore. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, cool. That's cool. Yeah, and I, I'm i not like a super gregarious, strange person. I mean, obviously, I draw charts and graphs and write rabbles and do weird things like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not out in the clubs type of a character. But, yeah, I can be extremely, like, convivial on the Internet just sending emails. And I don't think anybody has to be like, I'm a super introvert. I can't do that. It's like, same, friend, same. Like, just... Be there anyway. Yeah, do it anyway. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so Jess, as we, we get wrapping this up here, if people want to get started being more fearless, yeah, where would they start? I mean, you've got seven awesome tips in your book, but what like did you did you write them in order? And if so, just give us like the starting point for us, yeah, so we can get some practical tactical. Hey, I want to be more fearless, and I can do this. Yeah, if you're just feeling sort of stuck and like, ah, I'm afraid of everything and the world is on fire and we're all gonna die and I have to build my prep situation and the whole thing. Okay, then what do you want? Do that. So, all right, the world's ending. Well, maybe I'll go to Home Depot and I'll get a tree. Okay, good, there's one step. Oh, well, maybe I'm, well, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna call somebody over and da da da. And by the end of the day, like, if you just keep working toward one small good thing, you will have salvaged your entire mood. It's really thinking about what you want as opposed to all the stuff that's going on. So take the opposite of what you're thinking and run with that. Wow. That's great advice. And it's practical that people can actually do, which yeah. I'm super, and well, the, super grateful for. The thing is, we're all scared of different things. So not one answer is going to work for everybody. It's going to be like what's inside you and you already know it. You just have to ask what it is. Ask and listen. Be yeah. present with the answer. And then take an action. Do a little something that you can do. Right on. Awesome. I love that. So, Jess, they can go to jessicahagey.info to get more about you, to get a copy of the new book, which is fabulous, by the way. Seven Thank Ways you. to Be More Fearless, right? We can all do this. How to Be More Fearless is the title of the book. And if you want to get more connected with Jess, go to Jessica Hagey on Twitter. Check her out. Check out her cool Venn diagrams. I always am in awe of how simple you make things, Jess, and yet Thank so you. darn powerful. Thank you very much you for so being much. you. And congrats on a great book. It's really Thank cool, you. and I, I wish you all the success in the world. It's great to finally talk to you. You too. Thanks, Jess. And thanks, everyone, for listening, for watching, and for being you. Now go get How to Be Fearless.